Greetings everyone, Dr. H here. Today I want to go over the basic functions of isotope ozone elements. You should have it downloaded by now. Remember the last day to download it for free from Sweetwater is Thursday, April 30th. I have a project open and in my stereo output here, you can see I have a solid state bus compressor, a J37 saturation unit, and an adaptive limiter. So the first thing I want to do is to turn off the adaptive limiter. Next, in the final plug-in slot of your project, go ahead and place Ozone 9. If you are using Ozone to master multiple songs, what you really need to do first, however, is to bounce a WAV file or an AIFF file of each song and then place those songs in a new session. You can see I've got two songs here. You also want to space them out, get the timing between the songs right, and then place your Ozone 9 effect in the final plug-in slot. So I'm going to go ahead, open up the Ozone 9 here. And I'm just going to go through some of its basic features. I'm not going to master anything at the moment. I just want to show you the tools that you have in Ozone 9. So if we look here, we have three different mastering tools. We have an equalizer, we have a stereo imager, and a maximizer. Now, if we take a look here at the equalizer, I wanna go over some of the basic controls. This button here turns the equalizer off or on. Next, if you want to solo the equalizer and not listen to the other mastering effects you've got there, and below that, we have presets. There's my analog mid-range EQ preset, analog warmth, bass boost, clear bass, clear mid-range, control low end, so forth, so on. If you don't want to use any of these, all you have to do is hit this little control right here, and it sets us back to our default settings, which is flat. You can see here now that we have four different bands of EQ. Looks like I have a low shelving filter, a bell EQ, another bell EQ, and then a high shelving filter. You actually have several more bands of EQ. If I go over here and click this little globe icon, that brings up all the potential bands of EQ. If I want to turn the other ones on, all I have to do is hit these little buttons. And you can see that we've got here their center frequency, the amount of gain reduction, and the Q on each of these. If you look here, say at, at band number two, you can see it is a bell filter. I can actually go ahead and change that to a different types of filter here. We've got our standard bell, proportional Q, and band shelf. I also have a low shelf filter, high shelf filter, low pass filter, and high pass filter. I should also note that you can go back and forth between the analog and digital modes here. So let's move over to the stereo imager. You've got the on off control, solo control, and presets here. Modern width, spacious high end, synth spread, and wide stereo effects. If you want to go back to the default settings, you just click this button right here. Now as this is playing, you can see we actually have three different graphic views here. If I go over here to my stereo width control, and turn it all the way to the right, we have maximized our stereo image. If I turn it all the way to the left, 
we have basically placed it back in mono. I can also hit this mono button here to fold everything down to mono. Finally, I want to go over the maximizer. It is a limiter so that you can make sure that nothing in your project ever goes over zero dB. Two things I really recommend is leaving some headroom on your output ceiling. Don't ever have it all the way up to zero and also don't over compress. The next thing I would like to move on to are mastering presets. If you go ahead, hit the preset button there and you can see we have three different categories of presets. All purpose mastering, genre specific mastering, and instruments and buses. If I go here to all purpose mastering and select say clean low end and you can see here how it is adjusted the EQ and I should say that the scale here is actually very small. It might look like you're doing huge booster cuts but right now number four is only doing 2 dB and anytime you're doing mastering, if you have to do large boosts or cuts, really what you should do is go back and remix your project. One final thing I want to speak about now, and that is the master assistant. If you thought using the presets was mastering for dummies, this truly is mastering for dummies. I have my master set up here. There's three different things that we need to worry about here. One is intensity. Our choices are low intensity, medium intensity, high intensity. I'm going for medium intensity. Next, destination. Are you planning on streaming your master or mastering for CD? So I'm going to go for streaming and then hit the next button. So it's waiting for you to play audio. I would suggest that you go ahead and play a portion of your audio, the loudest part of your track. That is where you're gonna get the best results. In just a matter of seconds, Ozone Elements analyzed your audio, made its decisions on how it's going to set the equalizer and the maximus. I hit accept and there are the automated mastering assistant decisions. You can see our EQ, the imager is not being used. Our maximizer is set at a ceiling of minus one dB and a threshold minus 6.4. I'm actually gonna tweak it, bring that up. Maybe I also want to bring up a little more high end here. So you can override the mastering assistant but it will definitely get you in the ballpark. Using presets or mastering assistant is okay, but it is definitely mastering for dummies. An experienced, focused mastering engineer will always do a better job. All of you are beginners in mastering, but you should be learning the skills. You can use the mastering assistant and the mastering presets to help get you in the ballpark. I recommend that each of you tweak the results for yourself. Ozone 9 Elements will give you the basic tools to do this.